Well, we will, <laughs> excuse me, we're going to be starting a new series today in, uh, in giving. Uh, I try to, you know, I think uh, a lot of times churches and pastors and in particular kind of get themselves in trouble because they kind of focus too much on giving. I set a kind of a, a guideline for myself. It's not really a rule, but a guideline for myself that I try to preach about giving just once a year. And so we're kind of going to go through a little series here of a couple of Sundays uh, on giving. And when we talk about for giving, the first thing you need to understand is the, the first thing we're called to, to do from the, the Lord's Prayer on is to forgive. That's the first thing we're, we're taught to forgive, is to give forgiveness. We're to give forgiveness. That sounds easy, doesn't it? But how many of you know it's not so easy? And forgiveness is one of those things that is easy to say, hard to walk out. And I want us to take a little bit of time, a little bit of time to, um, to, just, to just walk through this concept of forgiveness. I think a lot of times when we talk about, we think about giving, we automatically, in our American minds, we go to money, right? We go to money. But there's a lot to, for, to giving. There's skills. There's giving our hearts to a cause. There's giving, um, giving our, our time. But... Giving is something that should be at the heart of what we do. We're going to talk a little bit more about the heart next week, about the heart of, of generosity. But the first way, in fact, when we use a lot of times we talk about somebody being forgiving, somebody being uh, uh, gracious, we'll say. They're being gracious, right? Right? Another time, and it's a little bit older of a, of a word, but we'd say they're being generous. They have a generous attitude. They don't take offense easy. You know, when somebody has this forgiveness thing down. I've often been asked about when it comes to the concept of forgiveness, you know, does that mean we don't ever get angry? No, that's not, that's not what that means. Forgiveness does not mean that you're not going to get angry. Forgiveness be, does not mean that it's a one-time decision. Forgiveness is a journey just like anything else in life. And in some cases, especially in those deep, dark, and hurtful things that can happen in life, the scars, whether it be abuse, whether it be, um, whether it be uh, a deep wound that was, that's from childhood. Or as an adult, you had somebody betray you, lie about you, cheat you. These things can happen, and they're painful. And they don't, it's not something that you can just snap your fingers and make that, all that emotion go away. But what the Bible warns us against is this concept of living in unforgiveness. Living in unforgiveness. I'm going to circle back to that specific thing next, next month. But I want, to, I want to kind of give that taste to, about it. Because the, the reality of it is when we talk about unforgiveness, we talk about the concept of what... what uh, those in the in 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 years gone by called the root of bitterness. You ever heard that term before? The root of bitterness. It goes deep, just like a weed. Just like a weed that you can't kill. It can it can take uh, forever to remove it. So let's start in Luke chapter six, verse thirty-seven and. 30. It says this, judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. And it will be given to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, 
will be put in your lap. For the measure you use it will be measured back to you. A lot of times that passage, pressed down, good measure, gets automatically applied to money. Again, because of our American mindset. But the context here is not actually about money. What is it about? Forgiveness. About judging others in, in particular. And we tend to do that, right? We tend to do that. You know, I, I find that the more I give forgiveness, the more grace I receive in return. The less forgiveness I give, the more I judge others, the more harshly I'm judged. And I think a lot of times we try to blame others for our hard attitude. But in reality, or we, we blame others for what is being done to us. But in reality, human beings, we parrot what is done to us. This is why Jesus tries to get us to break the cycle, right? So if somebody attacks you, you attack back. We'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. We'll read that passage. You know, this, this concept of forgiving and unforgiveness, we need to understand it's kind of like I talked about it being weed. I remember uh, when, I, when we were pastoring in Bassett, there was this tree. I never killed it. I tried, trust me, like three times to kill this tree. I even tried poison it. It just came up another, another place. Right? You ever had one of those deals? Yeah? It's the tree that would not die. I, I literally, I mean, when I first got to Bassett, it was probably about a three, four inch tree, and it was up between two buildings, and it was over the roof line. And I still remember uh, my father-in-law, Don, came, and uh, he was uh, having a visit with us, and I'm in the process of removing, I had cut the tree out with just, I think, I don't even think I had a chainsaw then. I just used a, a standard, you know, carpentry saw, cut it out, and uh, man, I was like, okay, maybe we'll be good to go. And then it would, then it started, these little shoots started coming up everywhere, right? I forget the tree it was, was but it was a, a ridiculously tough tree. And so he, we get the bright idea, we're going to dig it out. So we start to dig. The problem was that the tree literally had roots that were six feet long. And some we couldn't get to. And so we try to cut the roots. It just grew up somewhere else. And I'm sitting here going, you've got to be kidding me. Sometimes we have the same problem with bitterness. Every time we think we got it stamped out, especially if it's something that's been there for years, unforgiveness. Every time we try to start pulling it out, it seems like there's another root somewhere else. We gotta go dig that one out. And then we gotta go over here and we gotta dig it out over here. Because here's the thing about bitterness, it will touch every part of your life. Not one part of your life will be untouched by bitterness if you let it grow. Not your marriage, not your relationship with your kids, relationships with friends and family, coworkers. You ever met a bitter person who just seemed like they lived in bitterness all the time? It's frustrating to work with those people, right? Because they can't see that, that half the problem and their, half of the problems in their lives are related back to this one moment of unforgiveness. I remember a few years ago, I was dealing with some, some anger about a situation and I, I was struggling with it. I couldn't, I, it was always right there on the surface. It was always right there on the surface. And I couldn't, I couldn't just, I, I tried to pray about it. I tried giving it to God. And I was still struggling with anger and frustration. And it was starting to become a little bit of bitterness in my life. And I began to pray about it. And I felt like I finally had that, you ever had that time where you finally feel like you 
you're, give, you're starting the process of giving it up, whatever that emotional entanglement is. And there was this moment, I was coming back from a conference, and me and God just had, you ever had a knockdown drag out prayer? You know what I'm talking about? Where you and God just, just we, we have it out. We get, we get it all out. And it's not necessarily aimed at God, but it's aimed at a situation. And you're like, God, this is unfair. I don't like this. This is, this is wrong. And they may be all, and usually it's all true. It is wrong. It is hurtful. But that was the process that I started. And I started the process of healing, and it took a while. The better part of a year before I started feeling like, before I started feeling like I had truly given up, that I had truly let go of that anger and that bitterness that had started to grow in me. I'll tell you, I mean, it, it affected, it was starting to affect every part of my life. My marriage, my relationship with my kids, I was short with them. And I realized that it wasn't worth holding on to. It wasn't wor worth holding on to. And I began to let it go. And it took some time. It took some time. I, I, had, to, uh, I had to seek some, some wise counsel on how to address this, in my, this anger in my life. Because I, I, I realized I wasn't handling it well. Have you ever had anger that you just didn't know what to do with? It starts by making a choice. That you're going to start the process of giving it to God. So start the process of giving it to God. I had a friend of mine who went through a deep hurt. Um, a deep, deep hurt. Um, he was pastoring a church and... Um, Sometimes churches don't give you all of the information up front of how bad things are. <laughs> and he took the church, and despite his best efforts, and, um, and there, was, there was some dishonesty about where the church was actually at. The whole church just fell apart, and they tried to wrap it around his neck. And I remember him coming and starting the process of healing. It took him three or four years before he really felt like he was through it. And I remember a statement that he made that he said he decided to take a break from ministry. And he said, if I, my counselor told me this, if I don't take a break from ministry, I was going to be, I, I may never go back into ministry. And he is in ministry today. Because, he re because what, what the reality of it was, if we don't take the time, he's like, I'm too busy to deal with this. Or it's too inconvenient to deal with this. I'm too... We'll fill in the blank. What happens is it just takes longer. It could take three years, four years, a lifetime to work through it on our own as we start letting others in and we start letting God in primarily, we can start having that healing. We can start having that healing. Now, when we talk about forgiveness, um, we have to do it with a willing heart. Like I was talking about my situation. It, it took me a while to be willing to forgive. <clears throat> And some of it, it was, I, I thought I had forgiven, but there are some hurts that compound over time. You, ever, you know what I'm talking about? As memories begin to come back to you, you begin to internalize the hurt more. And what I realized for myself was it had to be a choice not to take offense, not to be angry. I made a choice. Sometimes it was, for a while, it was every day. For a while, it was, seemed like every 30 minutes, I was praying a prayer to God. Lord, I give it to you. But eventually, it was once a week, then once a month, 
once every six months, I would, I would start to dwell on it again, and I'd start to get angry again. Lord, I forgive. That's forgiveness. That's the journey that we're talking about. It's, it's easy to, be, to live in bitterness and anger and frustration. But it's much harder to walk out forgiveness. It's like a child. You ever had a child where you had to say, you told one of your kids, you go, you go tell your, you go tell your brother you're sorry. You ever had to do that? Or sister? Or cousin, whatever. Whatever, whoever they, they've hurt. And like, you go say you're sorry. Or you need to forgive them for what they did to you. And they're like, no. I'm not going to do it. We do that with God sometimes. We're like, no, we're not going to do it. I need to be angry with them. No, you don't. You don't. Can I, can I give you a secret? This is, and I want you to listen very closely. This is, this is deep spiritual knowledge, okay? People hurt people. The quicker you come to grips with that, the less offended you'll be. People hurt people. Yeah, I'm sorry. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Just so you know, this sermon isn't towards anybody else. <laughs> she asked for that one, by the way. No, I mean, that's the reality of it. Is people hurt people. And one of the things that I have learned in t- almost 20 years of ministry now is that if I allow... If I, if, I ha- if I took major offense at, at every person who said something hurtful or disrespectful, I would never get anything done. I would never get anything done spiritually or in the church or at home. Sometimes we talk about fiery darts of the enemy. Sometimes, they, sometimes we, we allow friendly fire to take us out. We do. We allow friendly fire to take us out. Luke chapter 6, verse 39 through 42. Luke chapter 6, verses 39 through 42. It's, it, it's, the, it's the parable that Jesus tells, and it says this. He told them a parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will, they bo- will, will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. Who do you seek, or who do you see the speck in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? By the way, there's a lot of scholars that say that that line was a joke, that Jesus was telling a joke. Have you ever thought about that, that Jesus told jokes? This is totally for free. I won't charge you a dime, all right? Um, (laughs) This is Jesus being funny. He's being ironic, right? And that's, so keep that in mind as we read this. How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take out the speck out of your own eye when you, do, when, you, when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. It's easy to see fault in others. It's easy to focus on somebody else's problems because it distracts us from our own. I've been there. It's easy to get distracted by the drama of life. But the reason, there's a reason why the Bible talks about the shield of faith and the breastplate of righteousness and the sword of the spirit that we read about throughout, the, new, throughout the, uh, uh, the epistles. Because there's a point where all you can do is get behind your shield and keep moving. Get behind your shield and keep moving. 
it's entirely too easy to stop. Unforgiveness is like quicksand. If you stop in it, you begin to sink. If you stop, you, get, you, you begin to sink. That's why we have to turn inwards. See, I found if I deal with me, everything, everybody out here tends to take care of themselves. I don't stress about world events. Why? Because I'm dealing with me. I don't stress about what others are saying about me because I know what's wrong with me. And I'm honest with myself about it. I believe psychologists call this emotional, emotional intelligence. Having the emotional intelligence to be honest with yourself. The worst liars are the ones that lie to themselves. Because everybody else can see it, but them, whatever it might be. We have to look inward. We have to. This understanding that we are called to be like Christ. And Christ, I mean, we, we tend to think that because Christ was perfect, that he never had to forgive. But that's, not, that's not what the Bible tells us. Literally on the cross, he is forgiving the people crucifying him. And from what, the way we read it, it is, it is agonizing to do. It's agonizing to do. But that's obedience sometimes, isn't it? That's obedience. This, uh, this con in Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through 42, it says this, You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if, he, if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you, take your tunic and let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. A lot of people think that this is an argument for pacifism. It is actually not. In the, in the context of the passage, there were, there were blood feuds that happened back in those days. Uh, so... If Josh, if Josh came up and insulted me, I'd insult him back. And then he slaps me, I'm going to slap him back. And it would go on like that. It would begin to escalate back and forth, sometimes even to murder. And so what Jesus is, is helping us understand here, he's not making an argument against self-defense. He's not making an argument against national defense. What he's making an argument against is personal offense. What he's saying is have a, heart of, have a generous heart when it comes to forgiveness. You can hurt me all you want. Now, you start hurting my kids or my wife, we got to have different issues. But you can hurt me all you want. And that's the kind of the point. Now, he's not advocating abuse either. He's using extremes to make a point. All right? He's using, he's using extremes to make a point. He's saying, because this was a concept of offense. This was a cycle of offense that was happening in his, in, in his world at the time. You didn't let anything go. You didn't let anything impugn your honor. But see, God's calling us something higher, something greater. And I think it's important for us to understand today, as we begin to close, that we are called to live free. That's not just free from sin, and it's not just free from the things of this world. It's also free from the, bless you by the way, 
We are also called to be free from bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. Because are we truly free if we ha- are entangled in those things? If our hearts become hard and unreceptive to the seed that is the word of God, simply because we refuse to forgive. A church that lives in forgiveness will be a church that will go far in the kingdom of God. A church that lives in unforgiveness will disintegrate from the inside out. Josh, go ahead and come on up. I talked about being honest with ourselves. So we're going to, Josh is just going to play some music for a few minutes. And we're going to take, you know, five minutes here. And I want us to turn the spotlight of our lives, the one that we tend to focus on other people or other things, and turn it inward. Turn it inward. And ask God to give us to give us insight. Is there something that we need to forgive? Is there someone we need to forgive? Is there something we need to let go? Maybe God calls you to forgive that person and you need to go talk to them to be able to do that. That's okay. But tonight, but today I just want to take a minute and let that spotlight turn inward. Let's pray, and then we'll take a few minutes. Father, we just thank you for what you have said. And God, we are grateful for the power of God. We're grateful for the fact that we are called to something higher, freedom that many people never experience the freedom of love and forgiveness and grace, both turned towards us as well as those around us. Father, we worship you and we thank you. We just give you this time. In Jesus' name, amen. close our service. Lord, let us remember your words. God, be with our meeting and our lunch. And Lord, we just bless our food and everybody who's uh, brought it today. And God, we just ask that the power of God would walk with us as we go. Lord, we give you this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.